previously on Dark Souls. Oh, you get. Oh, face my wrath. And so the journey continues. This video is sponsored by Christoph Frey. For excellent low-poly Hargans, check the link in the description below for some of his works. What's up, y'all? Boogie Knight here, and welcome back to the Lore Through. Thank y'all so much for continuing to join me on this uh, crazy, uh, weird wild experience. Let me just kill these uh, dudes real quick, and we'll do my usual recap. There we go. So when we last left off Raven Renegade, we had um, diverted yet again down into the catacombs. Uh, we had discovered some skeletons that would not stop spawning, and we uh, discovered what was causing them to constantly respawn, and we took that person to meet their makers. Um, yeah, so, um, we talked a little bit about the lore behind the catacombs, and I believe I spoke uh, briefly about... I don't know if I actually did that or not. I think I did a brief overview of the geography of Lordran. Um, but honestly, there's not too much to talk about with... <laughs> eat it, suckers. Another scimitar. Hooray. Without doing too much of a lore dump on the Tomb of the Giants. So, I... While I would like to get to the Tomb of the Giants... Um... Today... Well, tonight, technically. Today, tonight, whatever. Is it AM or PM? AM. Very, very AM. Um, what I want to do tonight, because there is more lore I want to talk about, um, namely, the Rite of Kindling, which is... We've heard Ray of Thorland mention it a couple times back in the undead area when she was surrounded by her uh, guardians, her kindred spirits, as it were. Sir Jack Zathis with the red-white shield. Yeah. But I also want to go over a strat um, that I realized in the last episode I completely nerfed because I fell for the Dark Souls trap of well, there was our first actual successful hit by the Skelebones. The Falchion doesn't do us anything. Um, let me take these guys out really quickly, and then let's take a quick look at our build. So you do want to double check something about... Oh, hello. Tall, dark, and ugly. He's, he's, he's waving a falchion right around there. Falchion? I never know what to say with that. Um, but first and foremost, I want to get back to my bloodstain. That is crucial because we all... Wait, did we human how do we get humanity? Just randomly got... Wait a second. Okay, I think... We just, yeah, we just loop back and around. I just want to make sure that I've covered... Yeah, okay, I think I've taken care of all the bad dudes. Okay, yeah, so, um, let's just take a quick look at our loadout. Okay, so we do still have, obviously we still have the plus 10 battle axe, the pyromancy glove, the silver knight shield plus 2, I do want to get that to a plus 3, stone helm, and stone armor, I don't know what kind of titan that requires, I suspect probably demon, we got a couple of things, let's go ahead and unequip transient and these because we're not needing them. I'm trying to make sure we sh shuck off as much weight. Of course, we still have Havel's ring, but this is what I want to confirm. We are wearing the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring, so that is why we're getting some more drops, and I suspect that's why we're continuing to get humanity. Oh, we got more of these uh, Banshee heads. Part of me wonders if Miyazaki was partially inspired by... Come on now. There you go. They've aggroed. Was partially inspired by the fallen from oh good lord from the Doom Saga. So I mean, they're the sprite setup is pretty good lord. 
is similar. The screeching, the disembodied heads. And when you think about it for a second, I want you all to just take a second to think. Um... Okay. I mean, if we can get this guy... ...off the cliffside... The only reason I did that is not because... Well, yeah, easy death. But also, don't forget that until... ...we... ...take down... ...the master... ...of this area, that is... ...the undead fire mage... These goons are... I just got parried. Are gonna keep... Reforming. As is evidenced by the fact that I did not actually... Is he in there? There he is. Come here, big boy. Now they will successfully die. And now we can take a little bit more time. There we go. And we're going to grab that in a second, but there is one more thing I do want to do quickly now that these galoots are dead. Just to recap, the skeletons will continue to reform until you've taken down the undead fire mage. And I I'm not sure how many there are. Now you're probably wondering to yourself why... Another scimitar, hooray. Two scimitars, huh? Good. That's exactly what I was looking for. Or not. We're okay now. Since we took down these dudes, we can successfully loot the joint. And honestly, I think <clears throat> at a relatively low level, solo pre Oh, hello. Oh. Okay, I deserve that shot. Another scimitar, hooray. We're doing okay now. We got nine Estus. We got our blood sand back. We got two humanity. Um, okay, so now that these dudes are dead, we went down here, and I want to see if this works. Now, obviously, we're going to have to fight these Galoots again, because... Um, now obviously, I can't tell right now, because... Estus again. We do want to get down here because we didn't have a chance to talk to Green Titanite Shard. Let's go. The Undead Blacksmith. And now that we're here, we have absolutely nothing. Okay. Then I could have sworn we had a bonfire here. But regardless, now we can talk to this, uh, smith. And then we can find our way back. Um, so let's just go ahead and Estus quickly. What's that thing? Make some smithing, then produce me some wares. I believe his name is Vamos. Not to be the same thing as Vamanos, but let's just go ahead and see if we can talk to get some dialogue. I'm here to smith, not to chit -chat. Um, anything else? I've told you, I'm here for the trade, not for the talk. This is an interesting character now. Um, enough with your presence. It disturbs me. Alright, let's go see, let's go do some repairing quickly. We do want to get that done. Obviously, it'd be cheaper to do it at a bonfire, but let's actually just try something quickly. Um, Spy Hunter, of course, we can't do that. Scimitar, we can't. Um,. Quil Quila? Oh, okay, Demon Titanite, you're right. Quilag, but that doesn't do much. Um, reinforce the armor. Can we let's actually let's let's look at modifying armor for a second. No, we don't want to we don't want to demodify that stuff. We really don't. Yeah, I think we have to do something with the stone armor, or it can't be modified anymore. Uh, what can we purchase? We can do Homeward Bone, actually. That's interesting. Let's go do one, because we're going to have to do that anyways. More Titanite. 
We've already got these, we're okay. Um, arrows were alright. Okay. So, Vamos is an interesting one, because as you can tell, he is not just undead, he is nothing but a skeleton. Now, there's not much lore behind him, but there is an ongoing fan theory that this was an aid to possibly Grave Lord Nido? And he was still retained and maintained some semblance of humanity, which is odd for when anybody in Lordran, because, well, hello, a hollowing process. Now, over here, we're going to have some fun, because we are going to be introduced to another set of enemies, these dudes, that come back, oh god, in... Come back in future Souls games. We've run into the Bone Wheel skeletons in Dark Souls 2. I don't know if they come back in Dark Souls 3. Oh god, we got another. We got a ban couple Banshee head. Oh, we got another Bone Wheel. Hang on, let's. Uh, got two of them. I mean, the good news about these things is you can pretty. Oh, hell's monkeys. Messed us up. I refuse to die. Uh, bone wheelies. Now, I don't want to get too close. We're going to go ahead and ask this because there's another baddie over there. Okay. You okay, buddy? Okay. Come on, fallen. There we go. I'm just gonna call these things fallen. I don't know what the actual name is. Or the Banshee Demons. Take a pick. Now, I believe they were gonna get another familiar enemy somewhere around here, but I could be wrong. I probably am wrong. But since we're here, um, let me finish clearing this area. Oh, hi, there's another. There's three of them. You guys gonna come on down here, join the fun? Or do I have to come up there first? Oh, they're coming. Let's see if I can just kind of kite these guys into doing their party tricks over here now. Just thinking about it. One. Alright, go on then. Um, I think there should be another familiar enemy somewhere around here, but I could be wrong. I probably am, but doesn't inhibit us from doing some exploring for treasure. Treasure! What? This guy. There we go. So he he done followed us down here now. Just uh, go on over here back to the battleground. We'll worry about that archer in a second because we do. This guy's kind of. Think about this for a second now. One of Gwyn's knights. What is one of Gwyn's knights doing down here in the catacombs? Let's tread slowly. There we go. Go for the backstab. Take a dirt nap, buddy. White Titanite Chunk. Now that's new. Oh, hang on. Oh, bugger. Oh, hang on. We got a we got a fire mage going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and Estus. That's good news for us. Now let's go ahead and see if we can look at this white Titanite chunk. 
This is news to me. Titan Chunk for weapon reinforcement. White Titan has powerful miracle energy. Miracle energy reinforces divine weapons up to plus nine and occult weapons to plus four. With discovery of Chunks and Lordran, the race to locate the legendary slabs has begun, but could it be a mere myth? Okay, we've heard that lore dump before. That's okay. Um, yeah. Interesting. Um, we got an archer somewhere down here. In my six o'clock position. Oh, we have two of them. I love the sheer fact that we're two-shotting these dudes. Um, I want to say somewhere around here we're going to get something to go into a covenant. We got dudes up here. We might have dudes up here. I don't know how many um, undead mages are left. Okay, um, okay, so, hi. Obviously, we have three humanity. Uh, hello. Um, okay, so these little dark spaces here are traps. Um, so if you step on them, they're going to fall down to a lower level, and you're going to take some damage. I don't want to go too far, because I do want to explore the other way quickly. Because somewhere around here, we're going to get um, an invitation. There we go. For a covenant. That is my big focus for tonight, to be honest with y'all, is try and get that. I Once again, I don't have any delusions that we're going to get to pinwheel and drop him or anything of that nature. Um, as much as I'd like to get the right of kindling, there, there's a lot that I want to explore still. And we're going to go over here, too, because, once again, there's something I want to show you uh, from a geographical standpoint. It might still be too early, but I find this is another thing that FromSoft does amazingly. And that's the geography. I posted a map on Twitter a few weeks ago of kind of a fan sketch of the overall geography. Ge geography. I, I speak good. Never mind. We are going to traverse the white light. We're not going to do that yet. That's gonna, I think, gonna take us back somewhere. Okay, so we're gonna go and backtrack. Sorry, because we do have some treasure over here um, from those two areas, but we haven't explored the top level, the top level domain. Sorry about that. I should have gone further to look at the white light. So, I believe I touched briefly upon it last episode, but just to kind of recap, think of. Lordran as kind of a pyramid with kind of divided in two for lack of a better description. So we have Sen's Fortress at the very, very top. And then we have, well, okay. At the very tip top, we have um, the Duke's Archives, which we briefly visited um, to get the doll that we needed for uh, Ulisil. To continue on with the lore for Artorius, my favorite part. Arch stole the nameless soldier. Got my heart for a lost soul the nameless. Never mind. I don't even know how that song goes. I just. It was a big popular song when I was in college. Anyway. Uh. Who we got? Oh. Hello? I smell bad things. This. Actually, no, though. This could be our ticket to the Covenant. Let's just. Stay a little bit frosty now. Okay, we got a Galoot over... Oh, we got a Titanite Demon over there. We're gonna go ahead and just ignore that for a second. We're going... Mosey on over here. I knew there was a big in somewhere. I just didn't know where. Uh, anything over here, mate? Okay, no, this is... How was that? Yeah, I believe the Titanite Demon is really the object of our quarry. And this takes us back. Oh yeah, so now we're at the top of this. Um, let's go and just see if we can trigger these dudes quickly. Alright, go. Okay, so I just smashed this up. Okay. So we do want to go see if we can take on this Titanite Demon, even though I'm probably going to get the ever-loving crap beaten out of me. 
Because from that, I think it's guarding our covenant. Because one of these coffins... Once again, don't quote me on it, but I am fairly certain that this thing will not just give us Titanite. There it is, the nestle in the coffin. It's guarding. Oh, okay, let's just wait a second. Again? Oh, went for the tail smash, okay. I mean, I could do the Zweihander. Okay, hang on. Um, get out of its killing jar for a second. Boom. There we go. It's gonna go for the full one. I deserve that. It's gonna go for the smash. We're good. Okay, I'm in a corner. Oh, that was interesting. Let's not get too cocky. I do... I should get my... Sweep. There it is. Again. Again. Okay, yep. Just gonna go for the double. Gonna go for a triple. Overhead. Back up. Okay, I deserve that one. Let's just back it up for a second. Oh. Okay, let's test his baby. Now, like I said in the last episode, I don't want to join the Covenant, but this is something if you do want to join the Covenant and get a sneak peek. He's going to go for the jump. Oh, he's just creeping. All right. Got one more Estus, because I'm probably going to just homeward bone after um, I do this Covenant. I just do that, and then, because now that... Oh, good lord. Now that that thing's dead... Whoop! I feel more comfortable towards... Exp oh! Oh! All right, I'll give you a shocker. Okay. Stay frosty. Okay, I deserve that one. Let's get out of his killing jar before he stun locks me. Got three more hits and we should be okay. And we're dead. Welcome back. <laughs> it's okay. I they those dudes are proper pain in the butt. So I do want to go and get back there. I think now that we've done that, we've done quite a bit of exploring. We can get back there in relatively decent time. And because we've done the exploration, now you don't have to. Not leaving 18,000 souls behind. That's. That's just. No. Unforgivable. We've gotten a good lay of the land, so I don't mind. I mean, I suppose I could. Nah, I'm not gonna worry about the Spy Hunter. And down you go. Hooray. See, once you kill the undead fire mage, I mean, it makes it so much easier, and you can be a more exploratory. And like I said, in a, this is a really decent area for farming souls and humanity. I mean, I just keep getting random humanity, I mean, just by wearing the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring, so... I think once you get the ring from... From the depths, I believe that's where I got it. Once you get the ring from the depths, you really are pretty set to farm whatever you want, whenever you want. Come here, buddy. There he goes. 
I'm putting you back together. I've done way too much of that in my life. There you go. I mean, a hundred... Okay, yeah, so a hundred souls at our point in the game ain't much. But I mean, in, since we've respawned less than ten minutes ago, we've already gotten a sizable chunk. And if you have a decent we enough weapon, you can do a far amount of damage. I just need to be a little bit more cognizant, oh, hello, of the Titanite Demon. We've also farmed all the treasure that we need, so once again, not too shabby. We'll get back down there. Now, once again, that area with the Titan Eden is completely optional. But for the sake of the lore, I'm going to just show you exactly what that is. Because that's a cool covenant if you really want to focus on that particular aspect of the game. I don't want to abandon my covenant to the Forest Hunters, because we're going to be returning I'll go on then to that area sooner rather than later. Well, no, I take it back. Later rather than sooner, but once again because we need to complete the Artorias DLC before we really focus on the particular area. Just because of a different cutscene that you'll get. Come on. There we go. Go back down here again. You okay, mate? Alright, cool. The only thing that sucks is we gotta go up against the bone wheels again. But since we took down the Fire Mage, nothing's going to regenerate. Nothing's going to reform. we got enough health. I think we should be... Whew. I was going to say, and then just watch me die again. <laughs> that, that would be night luck. We're good. No, go on then. Estus up again. There we go. Hey, vamos. Bye, vamos. Bone wheels, come on now. Come get some. I mean, there's no easy way to fight these these buffoons, honestly. Now, the real pain in the butt is in Dark Souls 2 when you go up against the Skeleton Lords and you get mobbed by those dudes. Yeah. Proper pain in the ass. There we go. We got two of these down here. That's good news for us. We dropped them. I think we have another two or three we gotta take down. Then we gotta take down the Black Knight, and then we're back to decent ground. There's the Banshee Heads, or the Fallen. Take a pick. Where are you? Come on now. It'd be kind of nice if those guys would proc. Okay, that's good. We got one. Oh, good lord almighty. There we go. Like I said, they're not dangerous by themselves. It's when they mob you that they get terrible. Because you get five or six of those dudes going all over, you're done. Particularly if you don't have a 100% physical um, damage defense. Okay, let's proc these guys. Okay, now we can get this guy to come down and we fight him. Actually, I don't know if he's going to respawn or not. I'm surprised. Maybe it's just because we're not human that we're not getting the messages. I guess it makes sense that because we're hollow. Okay, this. 
interesting. So I guess the Black Knight hasn't reformed. Interesting. Um, hang on one second. Okay, we're still okay. I think I get a little bit greedy fighting the Titanite Demon. Oh no, shocker. It's, it's the crux of the Dark Souls game, is that you let yourself kind of get fooled into his false sense of security. This area's just creepy. Not as creepy as an area in New Londo we're going to get to. Um, anyways, so, geographical. This, what you have the Duke's archives nestled at the very top with Anna Orlando just below it. <clears throat> then, parallel to Anna Orlando, you have the wall separating what I call Outer Lordran to Inner Lordran, just for a lack of better description. <clears throat> and then from Outer Lordran, that is this area, you have the tip top the Sense Fortress, and then the Undead Parish, and so on and so forth. So, you kind of have that as a rough overview. How you doing? You don't want to get into proc bleed. That would suck. Now, I mean, there's nothing wrong with falling down there, because it will lead to treasure. We got another scimitar hooray. But... I want, I'm not too focused on the church, because unless it's souls, we don't want to worry about that too much. So let's go back here and deal. Go ahead and just crack that. I want to get my blood stain first, but I don't know if that's going to be possible, depending on this dude. I could proc power within, but I feel like we got it down to, we, we were able to whittle it down to go. I got four. Oh. Do it again. Oh, no. Double. Oh. I like my current loadout. It's gonna. Yep, I'm gonna do the sweep. Oh, nest us up quick. Oh, come on, out of the way, you stupid fist. There we go. Um, I don't need to Estus again. It's gonna go for the sweep. Oh, yep. That was just bad news on my part. It's gonna go for the double. There we go. Estus. I'm probably gonna exhaust all my Estus fighting this dude, but that's okay. Oh, come on, you stupid screw. There we go. It's gonna go for a leap. Nope, oh, it's just, it's dragon. That's okay. See, that's why you want to use in these short areas a decent weapon that does decent damage. But isn't massive. Because that way you can Okay, I deserve that one. Don't. Get out of the way. We're back in the same position we were last time. Boom. There we go. Do me a service. Okay, I think with two or three more hits we can... Clinch! him. Oh, he's getting greedy now. We don't want to get greedy. Two more hits, and we've got this. I've used way too much Estus. He's done it. We have more Demon Titanite, but our real treasure is here. We've got three Eyes of Death. 
so, what are Eyes of Death, you might ask? Good question. We're about to find out. So now that this galoot is dead, um... There to go. Plenty of hum eight humanity. I can dig that. Binos, we can st we get three homeward bones. That's fine. Um, where'd that be? Um, bear with me. Hang on. There it is. Eyes of I sat in our mode at. Okay. Um, online. Of course, this is a PvP item. Lore phantoms from other worlds. Only Covenanter can use this item. While Hollows cannot. Okay. So this dread, the dreadful eyes of death spread faster across neighboring worlds. Phantoms lured to the host world may end up as victims, allowing the eyes of death to multiply and leading to further proliferation of bane. This is basically a PvP item used exclusively for the Covenant of Death, or uh, Servant of the Grave Lord. And so, and here's the cool thing. I'm going to see, I can't guarantee this, but I'm going to try and slow this down so you can see what happens. So we're going to go and nestle in this coffin quickly, and we're going to wait for um, some animation similar to when we got transported to the Undead Asylum. We've got four humanity. It's insane. I'm just going to wait for the cutscene. Like I said, I'll try and slow down to show you this, but... Because I don't think you can see it in regular motion, but I've heard this is really kind of cool. He's just chilling. He's doing his thing. There we go. Okay. Don't worry, it was intentional. Old Torgo's not gonna kill. That's not killing us. Now we're out. Let's see what the Nelly's going on here. This ain't the catacombs. This is the Tomb of the Giants. Show you something. Show you something neat. Something neato. This. Let's get a good look at here. So we can pray to the sarcophagus. We're not going to do it because I don't want to join the covenant. But if you have the eyes of the dead, actually, this is our first glimpse at Grave Lord Nito himself while he is not aggroed while it's not a boss fight. There he is right there. Obviously, I'll talk more about Nito, but you go into the coffin, you have the eyes of the dead, and you can join the Grave Lord Covenant. Obviously, it will abandon your former covenant, which, once again, I don't want to do because I put in enough time and irritation. Um, let's go back in here. There we go. Oh, there he just, just jumps inside the coffin without care, without a care of the world. Or, whatever. Torgo's gonna take us away again. Thanks, Torgo. I don't know if that's his real name or not, but whatever, we'll go with it. <laughs> and that's a PvP. Most most covenants are PvPs, but this is one of the more hidden ones. It's not out there like this Forest Hunter, the Servants of Chaos, um, the Sun Bros. I guess in some ways can be considered kind of an out there covenant. I mean, obviously you need to have a high level of faith. He's like, what's going on? We're trying to drop me. It's not really the Lloyd voice. So, how do we get back? Well, we could go back over here. But here's the thing. I've got 26,000 um, souls. I don't know how much we have to level up. But I don't want to lose these by dying. And since we have no Estus... This should be an easy way back. So obviously, we're going to have to fight the Bone Wheels again. And that's okay. Oh, hi. I noticed you there, you stupid git. Come on, let's get these guys to... There we go, we've aggroed them. 
Or not. There we go. Come on. You know when you want to just do your explodey thing? That's cool. But now we're done with that particular area. How you doing? Whew. Slick shoes. So we might call it a session when we get back to the bonfire. We do a little bit of leveling. Like I said, I didn't think I was going to get to pinwheel tonight. But we've done quite a bit. And I'm okay with that. Uh, is there anything else we need up here? Hello. Uh, this was going to do some spikes. I think so. Nope, we're good. What? No, I'm not fat rolling. And now, actually, I think these guys, these dudes would reform. Did we get souls out of this? I don't know. Nope. We got another dude somewhere around here. Okay. We've got the fourth. And we got a fog wall. Enter through the white light. Where's the fourth? Why? Actually, that's why. Okay, you know what? Um... Ah, oh, bollocks. Um, hang on. We... Uh, we do have to come back here later on. Alright. Calgon, take me away. Okay, um, can I level? Yes, we can. Okay, that's good news for us. Um, yeah, this will help our loadout a decent bit. I mean, look at this. We got, we got quite a bit of souls in this one. Uh, we do need to up more of that, of our vitality, but I think our dex needs to go up at some point, too. But right now, I want to get my endurance to probably a... Um, 26, 27. So I'm no longer fat rolling. But, actually... Do we want to do dex? Strength we're okay with. We're not going to worry about strength. Resistance we'll definitely do later on. Um... Dex will up it by one. Yeah, let's just pump into endurance. And then we'll do vitality next time. Go and just do that. And I think this is as good a place as any to stop. I mean we all we could kindle some more bonfires. This is this already is kindled, so we're already at plus ten. So yeah. Um So Okay. To finish my geography lesson, because you know I can't keep a thought in my head. This area runs adjacent to two big areas. Um, well, one... It runs just north, I guess, just above two areas. Um, Ash Lake and the Demon Ruins, which we will definitely get into um, further, into the uh, further into the game itself. So, But for now, this is where I'm going to stop this episode. <clears throat> we did a lot better than I anticipated. Um, and I hope y'all enjoy it as much as I do. It feels good to get back into this. But, of course, if you have any tips, tricks, or strats, let me know in the comments. I read every comment, and I try to reply to every comment. Um, as always, of course, a big thank you to Christoph Frey for being a sponsor of the Boogie Night Project. If you like horror games that are low-poly, but an emphasis, a massive emphasis on character development, plot, atmosphere, creep factor, plot, and storyline, check them out. Links in the description below. I guarantee you will not be let down. So, of course, with that being said, before I call tonight, if you like the Boogie Night Project and you want to find out more, I do have a Twitter page as well as a public Discord channel, and links to both of those are in the description below, as well as a link to my temporarily defunct Twitch page. And, of course, I, if you do want to, are curious, I do have a Patreon, whereas for as little as $1 a month, you get access to exclusive content, uh, such as access to the patron only section of my Discord. And, of course, Saturdays I do once a week patron-only playthrough episodes. 
So of course, definitely check that out if you want more information and know that it's all going towards a better computer as well as things to make this whole the Boogie Night project better for y'all. So otherwise, I hope y'all have a fantastic night and I'll catch y'all on the flip side, all right? Peace. Hey y'all, while my gratitude knows no bounds for every single bit of love and support y'all have shown for me over the years, there are a few people that I legitimately want to take a few minutes to thank for their unending help and support. Uh, first of all, obviously Christoph Frey, not just for being a sponsor of the Boogie Night Project, but also for letting me use his music from Gava Transistor for in my streams, as well as him kind of coming up with his own little fragment for my new introduction to my, um, the Boogie Night Project. And speaking of introductions, the intro, as well as my YouTube banner page, um, were done by the amazing Oren. You might know him as Oren VDK, as well as Oren from Couple K. Thank you so much, Oren. I really do appreciate the time you took to put together everything from the banner to the beautifully done introduction that merged perfectly with Kristoff's music from Gabba Transistor. So big thank you to them. And also, this would not be possible with the help of my extremely amazing patrons, both current and former, uh, such as Lexi Kitty, Silverleaf, Barry Grave, Harkov, Jure, Larian, and Oren, as well as a few others that have come and gone over the years. Y'all well, this would not be possible without your help and your support. Um, I know I have not been able to provide much in the way of um, uh, giving back in Patreon rewards, but I am in the process of revamping my Patreon as well as the rewards that I can do, so be prepared. Um, I know I joke about it, uh, saying that if you're morbidly fascinating, check it out, but if you do want to give um, to the Boogie Night Project, that is the easiest way to do so, and I am legitimately setting aside funds to buy more hardware for my computer, as well as making things look more professional but once again, very big thank y'all to everybody who has supported me from the beginning all the way to the present, um, as well as those individuals that have gone out of their way to help. So once again, guys, thank you so much for all your constant love and support. My gratitude knows no bounds, and I'll catch you on the flip side. All right. Peace.